Hey everyone, I'm Steve from GamersNexus.net and we're doing a quick news update, this time on the Intel Skylake CPUs. The remainder of Intel Skylake lineup has been announced as of the last couple of days. And just a refresher, the ones that are already out would include the i7-6700K, which we reviewed, and the i5-6600K. Both of these are, as indicated by the name, K-SKU CPUs, so they are meant for overclocking. They are the higher-end CPUs in the Skylake lineup before moving on to the Skylake Extreme Edition, which is not yet officially announced in any capacity. So those are the high-end CPUs, which are already out and we've reviewed. Today, the items of note would be the i3-6300 series, the i3-6100 series, the i5-66 and 6500 CPUs non-K, and the i7-6700 non-K CPU. There are a lot more CPUs than these that were announced, including the Core M series, the T-SKU CPUs, which are a lower TDP, meaning lower thermal and power requirement. And those are interesting, but they're not really desktop use, and it's not something we're gonna focus on here today. Starting with the i3 CPUs, the i3-6300 drops to 47 watts TDP from its predecessor, the i3-4300, that would be Haswell, which was at 54 watts TDP, so that is a seven watt reduction in total power requirement, and it increases the clock rate to 3.8 gigahertz from 3.5 gigahertz on the Haswell equivalent, so that is a 0.3 gigahertz increase or 300 megahertz. The price should be about identical. We currently only have wholesale pricing, so this is not direct to consumer individual box retail pricing, keep that in mind. But for a box of 1,000 of these CPUs, you're paying about $147 per i3-6300. So consumer pricing will be a little bit more than that because there's a markup, they have to make some money, but that's the general range where you should expect them to fall. For the i3-6100 CPU, the TDP is the same reduction, 47 watts from 54 watts, so that is 7 watts again. And the clock rate increase is also 300 megahertz, so the same as the 6300. It is 0.3 gigahertz increase in clock rate to 3.7 from 3.4 gigahertz on the previous Haswell equivalent, the 4130. Now, Haswell had a couple of interesting tweaks that do not normally happen with Intel CPU launches. And one of these was the launch of the 4160, which followed the 4130 quite a while after launch, actually. And the 4160 increased the clock rate to 3.6 gigahertz from the original 3.4 gigahertz on the 4130. So in that instance, you're only getting a 100 megahertz increase on the i3-6100 from the i3-4100, 4160 in this case. The price is about the same as the Haswell i3 series CPUs at $117 for a box of 1000. So again, add a bit for the consumer pricing, but that's about where it falls. Moving on to the i5 CPUs. So there's already the i5-6600K, which is the K SKU CPU for the i5 lineup in Skylake. And the K just means, as many of you already know, that is overclocking ready. So they've got very granular support for base clock increments in the Skylake architecture. And then there's also unlocked multiplier increases. So you can increase the clock of the K SKU Skylake CPUs quite a bit by using the base clock and the core clock multiplier jumps in, in BIOS. For the 6600 non-K CPU, TDP drops to 65 watts from 84 watts on the preceding Haswell CPU equivalent, which would be the i5-4670, excuse me. And after that came the i5-4690, which as many of you likely recall, the 4690, the 4790, both of these came with Devil's Canyon, and that was a refresh on the existing Haswell architecture. So it wasn't a new architecture, but it was an overclocked, pre-overclocked refresh of Haswell. In both cases, the TDP drop is about the same from 84 to 65 watts, and the clock rate increase on the i5-6600 from the i5-4670 is 3.3 gigahertz base, 3.9 gigahertz turbo on the new one from 3.4 base and 3.8 turbo. So there's a small jump, it's only 100 megahertz or so, and that's nothing to get super excited about, but of course there's a lot more to these CPUs than just the clock rate. There's 
cache changes, there are memory changes. So the biggest one is obviously DDR4 from DDR3. That is quite a big change and that will impact production very heavily if you are a production user. So don't just take the, the clock numbers and base a purchase on those because there's a whole lot more that goes into it. But for the purpose of news, the jumping clock rate is pretty small. And for gamers, that is one of the main things you're looking at is core count and clock rate. Then cache is pretty important as well. But DDR4 support, it's, it's good, not something that's necessary. For the pricing, you can expect around the same price of the 4670 for the new i5-6600 non-K CPU with a box of a thousand at $202 for the wholesale pricing and retail prices are yet undetermined. The i5-6600 drops 0.2 gigahertz below the i5-6600K, the K SKU, so it's a 200 megahertz decrease in clock rate and you lose some of that overclocking support, but it's expected to be about $20 cheaper. So if you are absolutely uninterested in the K SKU overclocking, which is perfectly valid, then you can save 20 bucks by going for the 6600 non-K, which again, very valid. And that's about the price that we saw the previous non-K CPUs offered at. So it's really no big change there for Intel. Uh, as far as the included coolers, that is one item to note with Haswell, you did get an included cooler with Skylake thus far in the K SKU there is no included CPU cooler. So you do have to factor in that cost, though really at that point, you should be buying an aftermarket cooler anyway. For the i7-6700 non-K CPU, the TDP drops to 65 watts from 84, just like the previous model, and that is from the 4770 and the 4790, both i7 core CPUs, and both Haswell, the 4790 being Devil's Canyon. The clock rate is about the same at 3.4 gigahertz on the 4770 and the 6700 and 3.9 gigahertz turbo with both of those. The price is $312 for a box of a thousand. So it's expected to be about the same price as the previous non-K SKU i7 CPUs. As for the difference between the 6700 and the 6700K, that is actually pretty measurable. It is a 0.6 gigahertz decrease for the non-K version of the 6700 CPU. So that is a 600 megahertz change, pretty big. And that's the base frequency, but the 6700 is expected to be priced around $40 cheaper than the 6700K. So that's quite a big difference in price when you're doing really any kind of mid-range build or thereabouts. And that's something that should be considered if you are not planning to do any overclocking whatsoever, because if you're not overclocking, they do bin out a bit better for the K SKU CPUs, but it's a big price savings. So that is all for the Intel news with the new CPUs that were just announced. Core M CPUs were also announced, as were the T SKU CPUs, but we're not going to cover those because they're not really core desktop user products. They're more for power saving users, business users, and folks like that. The laptop CPUs were also announced, but something we will go into separately. Hit the link in the description below for the article on all this with the charts if you wanna just see straight charts for the data. And if you like this type of reporting, as always, check out our Patreon page in the post roll video, and that helps us out a lot. We're gaining subscribers there pretty quickly. It's very exciting to see. So that is all for this time. I will see you all next time.